Hey everyone and welcome to the final part of modeling a sailing ship hull using ship planes in 3ds Max. Previously we have finished modeling the main section part of our sailing ship hull frame. We also modeled the stern part of the hull and today we will continue modeling the remaining part of the stern and we will model the bow part of the hull. So let's get started. First we need to extract the geometry information of these parts of the hull. And to do so, I will use the shear plane lines. But first, let me isolate our reference image. And as you can see, these traced lines on the hull figure are called the shear plane lines. Shear plane lines can be considered as the shape of the slice of the hull at certain points. I also traced the keel of the ship. And we will connect all these lines together using the cross section option. But first, we need to place each shear line in its correct position in the ship hull. So, I will select all the lines, Alt Q to exit the isolation mode, go to the perspective view, select the side view reference image, Alt Q to isolate all of them. Now, I will select my keel line, go to the left view, and I will move it into correct position of the keel, like this. Now, as you can see in the left view reference image, each dashed vertical line represents a shear line. So, back to the perspective view, select the first shear line, go to the left view, and move it into position of the first shear line, like this. And then, the second shear line, select it, go to the left view, and move it into place of the second shear line like this third one move it into correct position like this perfect and the last one go to the left view and move it into position like this and now let's select all the line exit the isolation mode and select the modeled part of the hull, Alt Q to isolate all of them. And as you can see, the shear lines follow the geometry of the modeled part of the hull. And we'll extract the geometrical information of the stern and the bow from this part of the shear lines and from this part of the shear line. But first, we need to connect these shear lines together and convert it to an editable poly surface and to do so we will use the cross section option and the surface modifier but first let's select all the shear lines and the keel line Control v to copy them alt q to isolate the copy then select any one of them right click attach and start attaching all the lines together like this now go to the vertex mode and as mentioned previously in part 2 to achieve a clean connection using the cross section option two conditions must be realized the position of the first vertex and the number of vertices in each spline so I will make some adjustment to our splines to satisfy both conditions. I will do this off camera and I will be back soon. And we are back. And as you can see, I have made some adjustment to our splines so that they have a uniform flow in the vertices across, across all splines. I also make sure that each spline has the same number of vertices as you can see each spline has 25 vertices i also make sure that all splines has the same position of first vertex i also added a new group of vertices in this area here to preserve the curvature in this area of the splines now i'm ready to connect these splines using the cross section option now from the geometry section Select cross section and start connecting all splines together using the cross section option like this. And as you can see, now I have connected all shear lines using the cross section option.
Now I'm ready to add my surface modifier. So go to modifiers, select the surface modifier, and here we have it. We have created an editable poly surface from the shear plane lines. And as you can see, I have extracted the geometry information of the bow part of the hull and the remaining part of the stern of the hull. Now I will exit the isolation mode and I will select my modeled part of the hull, the Art Q, to isolate both of them. And now I'm ready to complete the modeling process of the remaining parts of the hull. And I will start by the bow part of the hull. And I will do so by using the free form option. So I will select my main part of the hull and I will add an editable poly to it. Then I will select the new created part of the hull and I will add an editable poly to it. And back to our main object. And as you can see in the free form, the draw on option is assigned to grid. I will assign it to surface and I will pick the surface to be our new created object. Now go to the vertex mode by pressing 1 and enable the extend option. Zoom in here and now shift and drag the vertex. A new polygon will be created like this. I will go with four polygons for this part of the hull. And for this row of polygon, just drag the corner from the vertex and a new polygon will be created, as you can see. As you can see, using the freeform option allow us to create a new polygon by drawing it on a surface and the new created polygon follows the geometry of the surface we are drawing. As you can see, we have finished creating the bow port of the hull. Let's select our main object, isolate it, and go to the perspective view to see what have we done. As you can see, the bow port of the hull has been created, but it still needs some topology refining. And we'll do so using the option available in the freeform. So back to our front view. And I will start by using the drag option of the freeform. Go to vertex mode. And as you can see, the drag option allow me to move vertices along the surface of the object we are drawing on. And as you can see, I'm starting adjusting the position of the vertices to align with the border of our bow part like this and i can also use the drag option to refine the flow of our topology like this Now, after using the drag option to refine some of the topology, I will use now the relax brush and the confirm brush. And I will start by using the relax brush and I will go with the strength of 20 because the relax brush has the ability to push the polygon away from the surface we are drawing on. And start making some relaxation for our topology like this and be sure to limit your adjustment to the area 
of the created bow so not to miss the topology of the rest of the main object like this also don't use the relax brush at the border of the object because using the relax brush at the border of the object deform the object as shown some more relaxation to our topology then exit the wireframe mode and as you can see using the relax brush pushed our geometry away from the surface we are drawing on so now we'll use the conform brush which will move the geometry back on the surface and i can increase the strength with the conform brush to about 200 and start confirming and this will move our topology back on the surface of the object we are drawing on as you can see now i will complete the process of refining my topology using drag relax conform a brush until i'm satisfied with the flow of our topology and i will be back soon and we are back with our refined version of the bow part of the hull and as you can see i continued refining our topology using the drag relax comfort options in the free form i also made some adjustment to our topology some minor adjustment to our topology and i can show you the difference between the old and the new version and now i can say that i am satisfied with the flow of the topology in the bow area now let's go to the polygon mode select all and assign a new smoothing group to all the polygons and as you can see a perfect low poly model for our sailing ship hall now i'm ready to finish the modeling process of our ship hall and i will do so by completing the modeling of the stern part of the hull but first let's exit the isolation mode and grab the object we have created from the shear lines and now i will select this object and i will disable all the modifier all the layer above our lines layer now and before i do anything i will change its color to something like light yellow like this now i will select our main object and go to the edge mode go to wireframe mode zoom in and i want to select these three edges shift drag to extrude these edges then go to the vertex mode and enable snap to vertices and start snapping those these vertices to the beginning of each shear line like this now i'm left with this opening go to the edge mode select this edge and this edge and bridge them together now as you can see the stern part of the hull the remaining stern part of the hull begins to appear now back to the wireframe mode now i will select this edge and shift to extrude it then go to the vertex mode select this vertex and snap it to the beginning of the keel line then target weld this vertex with this vertex now i'm left with this area here so i will select this edge so go to the edge mode <coughs> select this edge shift drag it like this then go to the vertex mode select this vertex and snap it to the corner and the keel line like this now i'm left with this part here i want to connect this border this border with this border but as you can see as you can see i have here only one vertex while uh, on the other side i have two vertices and to deal with this problem i will go to the edge mode 
select those edges right click and connect them i will connect them with one edge this will create a new extra vertex here then go to target world and start welding though these vertices and here we are we have finished modeling the remaining part of the stern now i can select my main object and go to the polygon mode select all and clear all smoothing group and add a new smoothing group to our model let's isolate our main model and as you can see a perfect low poly model for our sailing ship hull perfect and this is the end of our final part and before ending our video let me show you what have i done using the ship hull we have created in our tutorial look at this beauty a beautiful 3d model for a ship hull from the 19th century i really loved modeling this model and it really inspired me to make the tutorial of the ship hall let me close the render window and as you can see a highly detailed model for a 19th century ship hall by the way it was a french battleship you can see let me show you the details by the way all this planking is modeled not texture not a plank texture but each plank was modeled as you can see and let me show you where the ship hull we modeled in our tutorial here it is this is the base for the model you have seen and let me go to the edge and as you can see it was just the beginning a lot of work a lot of love to reach this result at the end i really enjoyed doing this model really i do love sailing ship very much so i hope you have enjoyed watching our tutorial series of modeling a sailing ship hull using ship plans in 3ds max so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and show some love by liking our video and stay tuned see you later